So let's take a look at some little dreadnoughts, tanks and space marines. Epic is back and rebranded Legion's Imperialis. Let's take a look at the big new launch box. Hello and welcome back to Warspace Tactics, where today we're talking about the return of Warhammer Epic, recently revealed on Games Workshop's live streams previews. Really quite big news for the return of a major game mode to Warhammer, and it seems that if you wanted a blast from the past and to feel absolutely microscopic units of space marines, alongside really quite cute little Lehman Ross and Predator tanks, then it seems that the time is now. The news is that Warhammer Epic has been rebranded as something called Legion's Imperialis, Games Workshop had already kind of soft confirmed that this was going to be coming back in one of their last teaser previews, but now we get to see the final confirmation and also the reveal of their entire launch box. This basically does feel like it's the resurrection of Epic Warhammer 40k, they're not really technically 40k as they're starting out with the Horus Heresy setting, but this was basically exactly how Epic was originally released back in the day. The launch box for the game is going to be Space Marines against the Solar Auxilia, more or less the Imperial Guard, but a bit more elite and for heresy. As expected, this is indeed a tie-in with their other game modes at the same scale, Adeptus Titanicus and Aeronautica Imperialis. You can use all your Titans and certain Aeronautica Imperialis units that are relevant to the heresy. I feel like the fact that this is announced for heresy will at least disappoint a few people. It means that at least imminently there's not likely to be any Xenos representation for say Eldar or Orcs. Perhaps not too unexpected though, Games Workshop trying to keep things a bit more focused to one setting, though I think it's certainly not impossible that they could branch out a bit later down the line if this actually does well and people do get engaged with it and play it quite a lot. The scale of the game is 40k but small basically, around about a quarter of the size of normal Warhammer 40k, about an 8mm size in line with the Adeptus Titanicus and Aeronautica and Imperialis models. It does mean that the scale of the miniatures might be a tiny bit bigger than Epic 40k, which was perhaps closer to 6mm, so maybe not an absolute direct replacement, but pretty much near enough. For the details of the miniatures themselves, they were quite pleased with the amount of detail that they could actually get on their small squads these days, a fair bit superior to Epic when it was originally produced and they are going to be mounted on some quite tiny thin bases that are smaller than say 40k bases, just to look a bit more in keeping with the absolutely tiny infantry that are going to be mounted on them. First up we'll talk about the launch box, though apparently to follow this they'll have some terrain releases, the terrain release that they had with Adeptus Titanicus when that launched, that's apparently all going to return, plus there will be more bits after, as well as just the launch factions for the Heresy as well, the Space Marines and the Solar Auxilia, Apparently the other factions of the Horus Heresy will also get representation, so I guess that would imply things for, say, the Mechanicum or Custodes, perhaps. Epic 40k is a classic game that a lot of people have been kind of wondering if it might return at some stage, basically 40k at 6mm scale, and the general idea is that you play with vast sprawling formations, things that you'd never really be able to command at a full 40k size, as a lot of these miniatures will be ridiculously big. It's designed to reflect some pretty enormous engagements. Epic had a fair few different incarnations between 1988 and 2005 when it was discontinued, four different editions, and quite a big roster of units for many races and factions in 40k. The release of this new Legion's Imperialis does kind of mirror the old release of Epic, apparently that started out as Adeptus Titanicus in the late 80s, much in the same way as they really did the new Adeptus Titanicus, and then they added on expansions for Marines, then Orcs and Eldar, and it only really became Epic 40k a little bit after the initial launch. This release is a bit focused to heresy, but it does have some parallels. For that reason, I guess in theory it could be possible that they could expand the setting a bit after that. It is quite cool to see this game mode return after being supported for a very long time indeed. You could scrape together a whole bunch of ancient dated miniatures and play with the latest rule set for it, but it was certainly very niche for anyone who chose to, just because it's been such a long time since they had any real support for it, and it doesn't exactly have a huge player base. Getting on to today's announcements though, and the launch box for the new version of Epic is called Legion's Imperialis, which I must admit feels like a little bit less of a catchy title. They're giving it the subheadings Epic Battles in the Age of Darkness, though I feel like actually just giving it the word Epic in the title somewhere might have been a bit better. The launch box is a big plastic kit, and in this you get a Space Marines army, a Solar Auxilia army, and two Warhound Titans, all of which can be fielded all together in one force if you'd like to. As well as this, it also has the Legion Imperialis rulebook, and also dice, tokens, templates and measuring sticks for playing the game. I've got some photos of the front and back of the box as well, so this is roughly what you can expect. I guess it's going to be a fairly big set with really quite a lot of plastic miniatures. 
In the article, they say there's 223 miniatures in the box, though admittedly really quite a lot of them are fairly small and grouped in bunches of five on basis. Here's a photo of the miniature contents of the box. In the set, we've got a space reinforced with 18 different infantry bases. They do have a good amount of squad variety here, with Terminators, Tactical Marines, and Command Sections in there. There's four Contemptor Dreadnoughts with different arm weapon choices, three Predator tanks, and two Sikaran battle tanks. On the Solar Auxilia side of things, there's 18 infantry bases, four Charonite Ogrins, four Heavy Sentinels, four Lehman Rosses, and two Malkador Heavy tanks. Backing them all up are two Warhound Titans. I guess if you were playing the box set against the box set, you probably have one on either team. It just looks like it creates quite a spectacle when it's all ranked up like this. I think perhaps my favourite bit just to look at it are all the tiny tanks that you can have rumbling about. They do look kind of cool to operate in big formations, I think. Looking through the miniatures individually, here are a few of them for the Space Marines. On the left we've got a Command Squad, then some Tactical Legionaries in the middle, and then the Assault Squad on the right. They do look incredibly detailed for miniatures that are very small. It does feel kind of crazy that each one of these is basically going to be roughly one quarter the height of a regular Space Marine here. Very, very tiny little miniatures, and probably going to be a bit of a challenge to paint in this sort of detail. Looks like Games Workshop painters have actually edge highlighted a bunch of their shoulder pads and things, which looks like a bit of a challenge. I guess you could probably get some good stuff done with dry brushes, or maybe contrast paints though. I guess with this new version of Epic though, it's going to be more about the spectacle of the Warriors masked up as opposed to taking any one base and really looking at any one miniature in massive amounts of detail. I quite like the dramatic looking captain at the front of the command squad, plus the banner as well. Looks like a fun miniature there. I'm not sure if he's carrying a Volkite pistol or a plasma pistol there. Interesting to look at the little details. There are a few other flavours of inventory as well. There's some support legionaries that look like they've got a bunch of plasma guns. Some chunkier elite cataphractor terminators. And also it looks like there's some marines with heavy weapons there, a whole bunch of missile launchers on the bases as well, though I didn't see a close-up picture of them. Otherwise we've got a pair of Contemptor Dreadnoughts as well, they say that these stand a little bit shorter than a Space Marine and Warhammer 40k, so kind of fun that basically a Dreadnought is going to be kind of equivalent to an infantry model, of course being towered over by the things like the small knights and titans. For these ones it looks like you get the option between the assault cannon and the last cannon to mount on their arm sockets, then there's a couple of Sakaran battle tanks. These ones mount either the plasma cannons or battle cannons on top of their turrets, plus get the option of different sponsons as well. Apparently each of them get the options to choose their turret and sponsons included in the kit. There's also some small predators included as well. Again, apparently with the choices of turrets and sponsons as well. Looks like it's the standard auto cannons and last cannons that are the main ones that you've got the option of here. The Dimos pattern with the rounded turret. And there's also the option to give yourself a little tank commander in the cupola as well. All of these ones are painted up in the Legion colours of the Death Guard, though there's no actual Legion specific details on them as with most of their standard starter sets, so you can paint them up to match any Legion if you'd like to. The other army in the box are the Solar Auxilia miniatures. The infantry for these ones strongly mirrors the Space Marines really. The individual soldiers are a little bit smaller and less bulky, more than standard humans in carapace armour rather than very chunky space marines in power armour. You get a similar sort of command section with a big banner and what looks like a vox operator at the back. The standard auxiliaries get their last guns and it looks like the sergeant has a power sword there. And they also had a flamer squad as well with a whole bunch of flamethrowers to purge enemy infantry. It did sound like a few of these might have some trouble in the Age of Darkness, as it sounds like they're not particularly effective against other Space Marines, but could be quite effective against other Solar Auxilia. Otherwise, for some Elites, there's some Velatari Shock Troops with some great big axes. They seem to fight with power axes, which is kind of cool, plus some Sharonite Ogrins for a little bit of heavy lifting, augmented with some Bionic Power Source. Looks like there's some Shock Infantry that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Space Marines in combat. Next up, there's something called an Aethon Heavy Sentinel. Apparently the forerunner to the Sentinels that you find in Warhammer 40k these days. I think that's a multi-laser on top with a bunch of missile launchers as well. I guess it might be a last cannon. It comes with four Lehman Ross battle tanks as well, which I think are pretty cool to see rendered at this kind of scale. Looks like you've got the option for a more standard battle cannon, at least with the Heresy era version, plus the long-barreled Vanquisher. Probably kind of relevant when there's things like Titans and Knights on the table. These ones are done in the Heresy Era Solar Auxilia type style, the ones with the roll bars at the back of the tank to compensate for recoil I guess. Looks like you do have some other options as well, 
They've got the choice of a last cannon or the heavy bolter sticking out the front. Plus, looks like you can put a guy with a heavy stubber on the top as well to blaze away at the enemy with that. Finally, looks like the Solar Auxilia also have some Malkador heavy tanks on the go as well. A size a bit above and beyond the regular Lehman Rosses. Again, looks like they've got a tank commander option to back up their big battle cannons and their sponsor choices. Just feel quite cool with Adeptus Titanicus to have the option to field actual super heavy tanks as well. Feels like maybe it puts the Knights and Titans in a bit more scale, particularly alongside the infantry too. Talking of Titans, finally there are two Warhound Titans as well. Definitely one of the advantages of playing 40k at this kind of scale. The Warhound Titans are roughly the same sort of size as a Dreadnought in Warhammer 40k, standing maybe a little bit less than twice as tall as a Primaris Marine. These ones might be kind of useful for Adeptus Titanicus collectors as well, as they come with a few options that are currently only available in Forge World Resin. At least fairly pricey upgrades for standard plastic models, things like the Ursus Claw, Volkite Eradicator, Melter Lance and a Missile Launcher. Currently they're around £12 or $20 if you bought them directly from Forge World. So I guess having these rendered in plastic for Adeptus Titanicus collectors is kind of nice. Finally, during their stream and on the Warhammer community webpage, they did drop a few hints about gameplay. They did mention that the rulebook will be in the launch box, perhaps not in a too different feeling offer to the standard 40k launch box or the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness box set, and then will also be available to order separately. Looks like it's a tome of a fairly thick size. The way that you field armies in this game mode are done so in detachments, and you are allowed to field armies with multiple different allied detachments working in concert with each other, so you could mix, say, with marines with knights, titans, or solar auxilia. Whether or not there's any restrictions as to how many detachments you can take will probably be told in the book. I guess with the force of the Horus Heresy, there were lots of forces of most of the major factions fighting on each side. And I guess particularly for larger scale conflicts, you might well have different elements of an army present on both sides. It definitely seems to be a hallmark of 40k battles in the lore. Otherwise, the actual content for the rules was maybe a little bit on the scanty side, they did say that the game mode would support destructible terrain, so potentially to have the option of your god machines flattening buildings and things that the opponent might be hiding behind. That does sound kind of cool and very cinematic. And they did say which miniatures are likely to get support for these. They said that all Adept Titanicus models will get support on this game mode, but not everything for Aeronautica Imperialis. They specifically said heresy relevant Aeronautica Imperialis units. So I guess that might be not counting things like, say, Xenos Air Forces, like the Eldar or the Orc ones, perhaps. Overall, I think it's pretty exciting stuff that they are actually bringing this back. Games Workshop have resurrected really quite a lot of their older game modes at one stage or another over the past decade or so. Epic was one of the ones that hadn't been touched, and perhaps surprisingly so, given that a fair few people have some good fondness for it. Kind of makes me wonder if they might do something for Battlefleet Gothic, at least in the distant future. I do quite like that they're bringing things back, and it's certainly better than having no support for it. I feel like at least a few people will be a bit turned off though that it isn't Epic 40k, it's Epic Heresy basically. Certainly a fun setting that a lot of people have some great love for. But I feel like it would be nice to have realised armies like say Eldar and Orcs for alternative foes to go up against. Again, it maybe doesn't seem like it's entirely impossible further down the line. They already do have some Aeronautica units for those. Plus those forces were at least somewhat active at the time of the Heresy as well if maybe not the main focus of 40k's narrative at that point. Let me know your thoughts though, what do you make of this launch box for Legion Imperialis? Would you be tempted to pick it up and give the game mode a try? And what do you like or dislike about the release? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new things just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel and you'd like to help support content like this, I would just like to mention that Auspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.